All right, guys, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my man, Kenny. Kenny's killing it in the space. He's a badass business guy. He's a killer entrepreneur. He's a coach. He does all kinds of cool stuff. But listen to me. If you want to hear one of the coolest comeback stories in the world and talk about like overcomers, which you guys know, I'm really attracted to overcomers. A lot of you right now that you're watching, you've had things happen. The reason why you're not going to the next level is because you're holding on to your past. It's time to forget that. Once you hear his story, you're going to want to go to the next level. He's going to inspire you, and your same story can be like Kenny's. Check this out. I got all the voters. I swear to God, I've been at it for a minute. Climbing to the top, and this music was my ticket. Found a way to grind, turn up passion. All right, guys, Andy Elliott. I'm here today with my man, Kenny, and I want to tell you about this, all right? Number one, overcomers. Like, you guys know I live for that. Obviously, you know, becoming your best self, recreating yourself, reinventing yourself, You hear this language, right? It's like the Elliott Group language is like reinvent yourself. Like we just say it every day. When I see this happen, I try to find these stories so I can share them with you guys because I really think there's a lot of haters out there that anytime you try to go to another level in life or you did something, you know, and you don't feel like you're worthy of it, like everybody wants to just pin you down to your old life, but that's the past. That's not who you are. Failure is an event. It's not a person. You know, failure is the greatest teacher. It's like people that come from nothing end up with the most. I see it all the time, man. You know, when you really wreck yourself, it's like you get a chance to like resurrect yourself, right? And that's what Kenny did. So, Kenny, I'm here with you today. Um, Number one, we love you. We appreciate it. He's a part of our family. He's in our trainings. He's always here with coaching. And by the way, he coaches too. Notice the greatest coaches, the greatest, you know, uh, uh, players, they're always training. You know what I'm saying? Like, like let's just find the common denominator with, with successful people is that the successful people, the most ones are always consuming more knowledge you know they want to they want to self-develop faster there's they're always learning what you know successful people learn like they're always you know learning so like when i'm around kenny like he's ultra successful but he's always digging in because he's like man i know there's more you know if you're doing something like i want to know what you're doing and i love that and i'm obsessed with that and so is he so as i introduce kenny kenny tell us about yourself you got a family what's going on and obviously um tell us where you are now but also give us a little bit of background on on you because you are an overcomer you have you have Mash through what everybody said you could have. Everybody who doubted you, um, you know, now they're like, damn, look at Kenny. Um, so tell us who you are, what's going on, and l- let's crush it. Yeah, my name is Ken Baden. I'm the owner of uh, PCR Roofing, which is an acronym, stands for Potomac Customer Modeling. We dialed back on anything else other than roofing, man. We wanted to just really laser focus on what we do best, which is roofing. But I've been in that space for 16 years, man. I've been in the door to door. You know, I started selling windows, you know, and uh, and you're right, by the way, I do have a past. Uh, where, where are you out of? Maryland. Okay, you're out of Maryland. Okay, all right. So and soon we'll be in Delaware and Virginia. So And, and your, your roofing company's blowing up right now, right? Like, people are looking into acquiring you. They're like, damn, these guys are growing. Everything's, like, kicking ass. And you're like, nah, dude, we just got started. Yeah, I was going to say, man, it's hard for me. You know, that's one of, you know, so... I just started working with you as a coach. Ryan Stuman is one of my coaches, and he would say that I'm brutally honest in that I don't – I have these super high goals, like way up here. Our goal Good. is by December 31st, 2026, to be at $100 million, $50 million, uh, net, $10 million at EBITDA, right? That should get us a 10X. Do the math, it's right? $100 million so, exit. Right, mm-hmm. and that's the goal, and we will do it. To your point, we will do it. Yep. We have all the proof in the pudding. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Uh, PE is talking to us now, and if you are in the blue collar spaces, which is why we created Blue Collar Ballers, the coaching group. I don't think people really understand, man, the opportunities that are out there. Like, pri- people are the rich folks that are in private equity are looking to invest, and they've found the blue collar and the home service spaces. So, there's opportunities. We want to make sure that folks not only know about them, but, you know, know how to exit, know how to scale, know how to sell. Yeah. But, so, if you're talking here and he's like, hey, guys, in two years, my goal is to exit on a $100 million company, let's, let's, let's unpack this. Let's rewind. Okay. Let's go to like, um, you, you graduated from Maryland or what? School? I went to Maryland for one semester and then okay. I followed my girl at the time uh, to Frostburg, which is a, you know, a little D3 school in the mountains, a little nowhere school, but it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. And uh, right around then, my freshman year of, uh, of college, I got into a car accident. Uh, car accident led to 
You ever seen that show? What is it? Painkill? You probably don't watch much TV, man. You're always No, but around. I get it. But I understand. She got in a bad car bad accident, car accident and, then I'm, and I'm guessing they prescribed you killers, And then, the, you know, the story writes itself. But look, man, I went from college graduate and, uh, I don't know, man, homecoming, just normal guy, right? And uh, to convicted felon, uh, absolutely just a total liability of a human being to where I was, uh, you know, I start going from pills to heroin and that didn't happen overnight. But like, you wouldn't think, I certainly didn't think that. My family certainly didn't think that. That's not who they raised. My father's former military. Mm -hmm. None of them knew what the hell any of this was. You know, we didn't know what it was. Uh, and back then they were much more liberal prescribing this stuff, but that's not an excuse, man. That's what happened. I did, I did it. And, uh, I went homeless, two different instances, Again, I you know I, I try to rob a store that got me into uh, uh, jail for they don't they frown upon that so that got me some time yep. got me a felony and, and by uh, the way anybody watching this right now like as he's talking about it like this is one of those things that I want you to know that it doesn't matter what anybody goes through what matters is who you're going to become now yes sir and so as Kenny's talking to you right like I mean clearly we just start I could just talk about everything cool that he's doing right now. But I think the most important thing is, hey, when you were homeless, like, how yeah. did you get out of that? Okay, when, you know, when, when you were struggling with drugs, how did you get out of that? You know, when the car wreck happened, right, that wasn't planned. No. Like, do, like, deaths happen in families? Yeah. Um, I, I got a good friend of mine. Um, their best friend, he's 37 years old. He was at their house two nights ago. He just died. Mm. Like, he didn't wake up. Like, he was perfectly healthy. He's got two kids and a wife. Like, like their whole family now is in turmoil. And just last week, they were talking about taking over the world. Like, like, like my point is, is that you don't ever know, no. right? Like what happens? So the car wreck happens, you get prescription, you get in, getting hooked on that, which I know a lot of people that yep. that happens to, yep. um, you start hanging out with the wrong people and then, um, talk to us. So how did, how did you get out of this stuff? I'm like, glad how did you, you said what you just said, by the way, because it's a total family, you know, the families are really the ones that suffer the most because brother they just get completely ripped apart, but they don't get any of the relief or experience or any of the things that come with using these substances, man. And I completely shattered mine. I mean, I destroyed them. I'm a grandma's boy. My grandma, you couldn't tell her I could do anything wrong. Even when I stole from her, God forbid, I did, man. Like that's, I can't tell you how many nights I spent pacing around her purse when I lived there at like 27, like a real, real winter post-college. Well, right? I love your honesty because listen, you know what? I, I, we're in a, we live in a world right now where people aren't honest anymore. Yeah, no, they're not. Okay, listen to me. People won't tell that stuff because they're ashamed of it. You know what I love? I love who you are today. Yeah. And I love that when you tell this stuff, I'm sure that every person, they could be like, oh, man. But slow down look at your life. Do listen to me. Maybe you didn't do that, but you did something else. Everybody, oh, yeah. guys, I've done so many things wrong that when I hear other people be like, dude, I own this, you know, and by like, I mean, I'm going to own my shit. Like, I did that. I did this. I did that. Only these people reach the highest level of success because this is how you, you do it all wrong before you learn to do it all right in most cases. Okay. And I'm very descriptive and very, so I didn't used to be. Ryan actually encouraged that, right? Yeah, so I had I a private it. Facebook group. I hit all that, right? And I thought if I could just do enough, like I'm going to go out and do 10 million. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to go get a sports car. And then I'm going to come back to Facebook, unprivate, show everybody how fucking great I am, right? And they'll just forget about all the stuff I did. And he kind of sat and was like, look, brother, like, you're shortchanging. You say you want to help all these folks, yeah. and you're going to show them all this awesome shit, but you're not going to show where you came from, and you got an opportunity right now to, like you said, I'm going to show you guys while I'm doing it. I have accomplished an awful lot, uh, for sure. I'm not, I'm not putting down what I've done thus far. I know it's a lot. I've, I've built a couple seven-figure companies, uh, soon to be eight, you know, coaching group, multiple podcasts. You know, I've got somebody who I followed like Ryan. That's now a good friend of mine that we're doing things together. Hopefully we can do the same. And this, even this, this is, I was fucking sleeping outside six years ago, outside, completely had nothing, no bank account. Credit was gone. Couldn't get a bank account. I never planned on coming back to like have to fix this shit. So it wasn't really on the top of my mind to worry about what made you what made you come back? I mean, how, how did you come off rock bottom? I came back because I got dropped off in Calvert County, Maryland, as opposed to Charles County, Maryland. If I had been dropped off in Charles County, Maryland, I would have stayed homeless and I'd be dead by now. And okay, by explain, God's grace, explain that. So one so, area is very rural and there's absolutely nothing there. And it's just so the girl I was dating, this was after many, many attempts, man, in and out, in and out. Family's gone. Rightfully so. They can't. 
They can't deal with it sure. anymore, right? Love me, but they can't deal with Most it. Most people, they don't change till they hit rock bottom right, and, and, even, like, and even deeper, right? <laughs> Brother, so, I mean, I thought my rock bottom was robbing the store, mind you, right? So I'm mm-hmm. like, I'll never go back to that. Well, nope. Uh, this was this was worse. Um, I won't get into the gory details, man, but I tried to take stuff from the people that had it, and it didn't go so well for mm-hmm. me, so I'm completely beat to shit. Uh, and I had done stuff like that many times, and the girl that I'm dating at the time who was the last person who would talk to me is just like, dude, I can't. And drops me off in the middle of the woods, really. And that's what saved my life, man. Because had, had she taken me where I wanted to go, which was where all the other homeless folks were, to go do homeless people shit and beg for money. And this is a college graduate, somebody who comes from a good family, and I had been reduced to that. And I was okay with it, dude. I was ready to accept that for the rest of my life. But because of God's grace, which is not, you know, that's not earned. Right? It's God's grace. I did not deserve that at that time. I was given that opportunity to sit my ass there in the middle of nowhere, thinking I could go like... Bear grills it, you know what I mean? Like, I'll make a little fort in the woods or some shit. I wasn't not very good at that. So that yeah. next day, I was like, I'm going to walk my happy ass to the, the hospital and ask for help. And that's really it, man. It's that opera. That was it. So that was at, so, so simple. You just asked for help. Right, so that is okay. a theme in my life, brother, that that was the first time that I asked for help. Because before that, I can't tell you how many times I overcomplicated. Like, I got this. I got to yeah. will. Why can't I will myself? I'm a strong dude. Why can't I will dude, myself? Dude, that is a huge this? lesson right now. A lot of people, they need to get help. And I, and I mean it. And by the way, like, listen to me. That guy, that guy that got dropped off in the woods, the guy that's totally lost, ready to give up, completely just done, asked for help. And now you are here you are today. And looking at you, man, you're a good-looking guy. You take care of yourself. You're well-dressed. You carry yourself well. Like, dude, like, no one could put that that person is you today. So... You go ask for help. What happens? And it's a slow burn, man, from there. Sure, but, but it's like, a, how you does know, that evolve? Like, do you get checked in? Or like, yeah, you go to rehab. Uh, and it's, you know, I'm again, I'm going to spare you. I didn't really want to go, but I was out of options, so I went. And again, man, like, I asked. Now I ask, and this is a process, and for the sake of anonymity and some of those back things in these 12-step programs, they like their anonymity. I don't give a shit, right? Like, my stories are, it's social media, dude. You do, you fart anywhere, and it's going to be on social media, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, who cares? I don't care uh, personally. But I asked somebody in one of those communities to sponsor me, mentor me, right? Mm-hmm. And he did. And uh, Next thing you know, I catch myself wanting to stay longer in places like rehab where I couldn't, before I'd just be itching to get out and fix things right away. And uh, I'd always been in sales, mind you, like Mm -hmm. throughout this whole time, even after the pain, because I'd get some glimpses of sobriety and I could sell. So they'd always hire me back. Yeah, well, you're door to door, which is the greatest salespeople that ever existed. And they'd always hire me back. But I couldn't put any time together, man. So I'd make a lot of money and burn it all down. Make a lot of money, burn it all down. Get a management job, burn it all down. VP sales. That wasn't until my sobriety stand this time. So anyhow, I get back in and I ask someone for help to, to, to show me how he did it. And there's a theme here because I believe there's a real theme in the parallels between the recovery world and business. I hear Bradley, I hear you guys talk about things like gratitude. And a lot of these things are that are prerequisites and the things that we need to be successful. Or the strongly suggested things if you want to. Those are things that are life like musts in sobriety. Or your ass is dead, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, here's how we did it. You can take these suggestions or good luck, right? And uh, the gratitude thing, like, if I don't stay in gratitude, I'm dead, right? If I don't give back, I'm dead, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I can put it differently and mildly, but that's ultimately what it means, right? And truly, there's fates that are worse than death, and one would be going back and living like that. Not a chance. No, th- but just put a bullet in my head. And it will never happen, yeah. you know, for me. No, but it's just not I'm, an option. No, it's just exactly. not an option. So, so, how, so how do you keep yourself on your A game now? Like, how did, like, what were the things, you said you found somebody, they taught you kind of how to get to that next way. So, obviously, it sounds like you found a mentor. So, that's a mentor, right? Uh-huh. And then, they call him a sponsor. But, again, I, I, and so, next thing you know, it's a couple years go by, I start to get gained some confidence. Because at this time, brother, I had, I mean, nothing, nothing. I, I'm in a halfway house. I'm 32 years old. I'm thinking my life's over. I'm on food stamps and government assistance. I don't have a driver's license. I don't have a car. I can't get anywhere. Some guy, and, and I asked for help. I said, I need a job. Hey, I need a job at a meeting. Next morning, somebody wakes me up at 4 a.m. and says, hey, man, can you paint? I said, I can paint today. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get a ride to go <laughs> handyman. I don't know shit about being a handyman. Yeah, but, but he liked my attitude. 
mm-hmm. liked my attitude. He thought he said, "You have a, if you keep your attitude." He was a guy in sobriety. Mm-hmm. He didn't need my help like that. Mm-hmm. He was helping people. He picked me up 30 minutes to and from my halfway house. We worked on the house next door to him. He just was doing it to help, dude. And yeah. that was such a great thing for me to see. Like, this dude doesn't... Yeah, he's now, just now you're paying it forward. That's the reason why you care so much. And, yeah, brother, it, it, it just... And he died recently, man. But, like, that guy was at my first year anniversary. And, like, it just meant... It just was such a good foundational piece. Like, you mentioned something about building that foundation. Mm-hmm. For me, these examples of gratitude and, like, this is what you do. This guy has 30-plus years, and he's picking my ass up. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need my help. He's finding work for me. All because he thinks I got a chance to make it. Mm -hmm. There was two of us originally. He didn't pick the other guy up the next day. That guy's attitude sucked. That guy was late. He said, you be here this time. I'm driving to come pick you all up. If you're not out here at this time, he come out with his little pajamas on trying to pull his shorts up. He said, he just said, get in and just took me. And that's how I got the job. But he liked my attitude. He liked that I was was serious about staying and, and getting some help. And then from there... It was just one little step at a time, man. It, it, for me, I'm very much like, I'm going to take on the world fucking tomorrow. And I'm going to do all these things and I'm going to get it tomorrow. And I fucking hate when people tell me I can't do it. It just makes me want to do it mm-hmm. more. We were just talking about it. Oh, yeah. Like, so it dr- fuels you. But with this, man, it's like my dad was like, Ken, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, man. Because for me, I was in so much debt, Andy. Again, I didn't plan on coming back. So, like, it was honestly so much that it was like, hard for me to really stress about because i'm like fuck it man i can't do anything about it anyhow man i'm declared oh, yeah. bankruptcy my dad thought that was the idea the woman i'm married to now had just gotten out of law school and i got a message on my phone because i got caught trying to rob a friend of mine's house and this is just one of the many things i had mm-hmm. done she said if you come to my graduation i will call the police we're married now you know what i mean she's an attorney you know she met with me this is after i got sober I said, I need some help. Again, I need some help. I need some help with my finances. I think I got to declare bankruptcy. Would you help me? She met me at Starbucks. At this point, I had saved up enough money to get an S10, a 1998 S10 with 300,000 miles that leaked clutch fluid, but I bought it for $900. I hustled yeah. him down. It was like 1000 He wanted like 13 I was like, I'll give you nine, dude. He was like, all right. I love that. So I gave him the 900 bucks cash, had a little dot three with me. It would get me. At this point, too, I had gotten a job with another guy that helped me in recovery that said, hey, I'm in retrofitting lights. It pays more. It's a real job. It's a taxable. Not that the other one wasn't taxable. Sure. But, uh, yeah. but, yeah, <laughs> but anyhow, like, it, it's a better job, but I need to get rides to work and shit. So this time they said, hey, whoever gets the truck first, we need somebody who has a truck. Any one of you guys gets a truck first, so retrofitting these lights gets to be the manager. I, I didn't have a fucking car. I hustled. Worked all these hours. Within a week, I got the 900 bucks, got the truck. That was a shitty truck. Yeah. It was like but you got a, a truck. micro truck, but it was a truck. Technically, yeah. this is a truck. Yeah. So I got the job, That's got the raise, truck. got the 22 bucks an hour, which I really could use. And I needed that, man. And that company ended up folding, but it was like, it got me to the next phase. And all of these things are like little steps I had to make and ask for help. Help from Becca, who is now my wife, who said, you're not declaring bankruptcy, bro. Like... This is like 60, 70 K not minus your, your don't count your student loans because they don't count them like that. So it's not as much as you think you can get out of this. Yeah. And I trusted she was a hell of a lot smarter than me. Like you feel about your missus. So she I was like, you okay, if you say it, cause my dad was like, yep, sounds right. Go, yeah. go declare bankruptcy. I'm yeah. like, cool pops. Let's do it. I would not have my business. I would not have my homes. It gets me emotional thinking about it because now she gets to reap those benefits of that decision that day. And if you don't think God was involved in that, I don't know what to tell you. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918 210 0254. 918 210 0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. You know what well, I mean? And, well, and you had to make a decision too to trust her. Yeah, yeah, That's super yeah. Important and even the fact people. that we were, you know, we had dated very briefly. She ended up dating like a friend of mine. Like the fact that I just kept coming back around like a gnat. You know, I'm a, I guess I am a closer. I was like, nah, there's unfinished business here. I'm gonna keep trying to squeeze my way in. But the fact she even met me. Remember before she was like, you show up to my. I'm calling the cops. You know, and she's she just said, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out. And then. uh the just power, asking the power and chasing what you want yes man that's the theme and then not being 
before this happened, I was an asshole. I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. I was a, I was an arrogant asshole. I had no no direction. I had no goals, no real aspirations. It's just things were going to happen for me because, you know, I don't know. I was just a delusional kid. Yeah. This was the best thing that ever happened to me. So if you think that I'm going to hide details, first of all, you know how many people hit me up in their DMs like, brother, I, I need your help. I need... I've hired people in recovery. I mean, like, and that's worked out and hasn't worked out. But, like, I am going to tell all the gory details because I know that that, I know where I'm going. Yeah. And it's up, up, up. Well, I think I think that everybody needs to understand that when, the reason why I like these podcasts, the reason why I like social media, especially from real people, is because it's refreshing. It's refreshing to hear that people can lose. It's refreshing to hear that real people that have real problems that can really make a decision to either crash or rise and to look at the situation. Like you can watch this and you can be like, damn man, like I'm listening to you and I'm like, dude, a lot of people think they got problems. (laughs) Dude, you don't have any problems. Like you can't overcome what you're going through and look at what he overcame. Like this is crazy. Now a lot of your stuff is self-inflicted, but all of our shit, but all of our shit is self-inflicted. A lot of us, unless you're getting sick or you get cancer or you do something and You know, I don't wish that on anybody, but to cause our own problems, we just dig ourselves a hole and then we either bury ourselves in it or we dig ourselves out. And dude, like, I love it. Like, and that's why I say, like, I love that you keep explaining everything because to me, most people get lost and they're like, oh man, dude, you have no idea. This entire podcast could be where he's at now and what he has now and what he's doing now. And you wouldn't understand any of this. And then you try to relay and you'd be like, man, that guy don't have it like me. How'd that guy get so lucky? Dude, you're an idiot. There's no luck here. And I just want you to keep going. You know, yeah. like as I mean, you talk. I didn't have a bank account. My business, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a bank so, account until like three years ago, four years ago. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I just got a bank account. Three years will change everything. So so how did that, so how did you start your own company? So uh, I get back into sales. And again, you know, I, the, the, the light retrofitting light company didn't work out. So I go back to what I know now. And I've done this in the past, man. I get these periods of, so I usually go back and that's why I have such an affinity for blue collar work, man, because it was like, all right, get fall on my ass. I go back into the labor side of the blue collar place, make some money, get some stability. Then I go back into sales because that's where I know how to make the money. Mm-hmm. Then I can't keep it together. Crash and burn. This mm-hmm. time, ultimately, man, what, what was different this time was I was fucking done. That's it. I had my ass thoroughly whipped mm-hmm. to where I was like, I'm done, dude. I didn't think I was coming back. I really didn't. So I know I don't have another one in me. Like, this is completely God's grace. Completely. So, and how hard it was to get back. But it really also got back so much faster than I would have ever thought, man. Like You're a pro now at overcoming shit. <laughs> yeah, man, I, you know, two years in, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I, got, I, I can't get a place like that. I don't have any credit. I don't have a bank account. Ladies renting a room above a barn. And, a, and, a, and it was the coolest place I ever lived. That's my first place I got to live on my own. She's like old school, taking cash. I'm like, cool, no background. Like, really like me. They were the sweetest people. Let me ride their horses. Taught me how to ride horseback. And I helped them with the barn. Dude, I would still be living there if I didn't meet the, my girl. That place was awesome. It was yeah. on a fucking barn. It was awesome. Like, everything I did, everywhere I went, every next step was just like... Piece of the puzzle. It, it, yes. And, and then I got into sales again, right? And now I'm... All right, I'm back in this, and I'm on fire, dude. Are you in roofing sales now, or where? I'm in roofing sales now. Back, you know, I started years ago selling windows, and I've been, you know, I'm old. I was selling windows, not door to door. That was appointment, and then it was door to door. Then it was door to door solar. Then it was door to door roofing, and roofing is the the sexy thing now, yeah. right? So, I go back to what I know. Only I get recruited as a VP. They're like, no, no, we don't want you to sell. We want you to run the whole department. It's a startup. And I've been a part of a couple of these now. I had been a manager before, so I'm like, all right, cool. Once you get in the industry so long, you know a bunch of people just mm-hmm. like you do, and it's like, all right, I, I'll come build this with you. Yeah. They did a little, a little. Uh, they were a little dishonest at, at the people I had, but that's okay. I went out and fucking built it. I had no excuses. All right, cool, we're going to do it. Like I grinded, I made calls, I built that department. We mm-hmm. had a lot of success for retail, and we made it happen. And that gave me the confidence, to your point. Now I'm working, I'm, I'm the entrepreneur, and I would have stayed that entrepreneur. Yep. I thought this was it. I'm in. I'm with it. I'm going to build this company up. Just get the fuck out of my way. Don't fuck this up. You got two really good dudes on top. They didn't have an Andy or a me. And I learned that lesson. Like That guy was on ultimately the weakest link. He had these two guys already build this company, work together, both of whom own their own companies now. But we didn't want to. 
we ready to build this company up, man. And we did. He just couldn't get out of his own way. But that's another story for another day. However. So did you get, I'm just asking. So did you get betrayed? Did they let you down? Did they lie to he you? He lied to me. He lied to me. So, one. So I want to make a message to everybody. If you ever want to build anything really special, okay? I tell my team every day, if anybody ever catches me lying to you, if I ever lie to you, pack your shit and leave. Because you're, I'm not worthy to have you work for me. It's a, it's a privilege to be a leader. I'm watching leaders and companies all around the world, okay, who have these entrepreneurs that are working for them, who want to help them build their dreams, who want, all they want is trust and loyalty and to make sure they're never going to get betrayed. And they want to be able to just have a good life. They want to give everything they got to build that business. But you want to make sure that there's like a circle of safety in which you know that you don't have anything to worry about. And then once you get betrayed and you've given all you've got, then you're like, dude, all right, I'm going to start my own business now. Like, dude, I don't want to do this. But like, I'll, I'll do this versus going and giving all I got for someone else to get lied to again. So if you want to build a company that is just like insulated from the rest of the world that no one can mess with, you must build a culture of trust. And that's all you wanted. My, your situation is the same as mine. All right, keep going. So, yeah. so you and this other guy who currently own, own your own companies mm -hmm. and who are killing it, Wanted to work for this guy. Yes. He messed that up. Now what happens? We'd still be there. Now, at this point, I had just gotten a bank account, so it wasn't that long ago. But, but I knew my credit was, mm -hmm. no, it wasn't going to happen, right? I, I think I might have been able to just get a car financed, but I wasn't going to get a, I didn't think I was going to get the things I needed for a business yeah, in slowly Maryland. Slowly coming back. Yep. Slowly coming back, right, at that point. But was I ready? I had fear. You know, there's two themes. There's asking for help, and there's, realizing and overcoming fear and starting to see it in the different forms that it manifests, you know, either the fear of loss or fear, you're not going to get something that you, that you want. Right. And so, but I'm still new. I'm still learning these things. And, uh, and I think, man, there's no fucking way they're going to give me a, a license to be a GC in the state of Maryland, which is required to do roofing or any of those things. No way. Not with my record, not with my credit. So I had the brilliant idea of, of calling a buddy of mine, we're going to be partners. You know, he has nothing to know, knows nothing about any of this, but I thought he had the MHIC license, which is what we needed. He didn't, but he was willing to go get it. And he was like, hey, you, I know you know everything there is to know about this. Uh, and that didn't work out very good, man. I mean, there's the whole story about, like, we did great. The partnership didn't do so good. Yeah. We didn't fi sign paperwork. We didn't do the things the right way that they suggest that you do now, like an operating agreement, have everything clearly sp – even your separation agreements. So, so many people make this big mistake that they believe and they want something so much that they don't think they need an agreement in place. And you even said even from a separation agreement, right? Because they don't think that far ahead. Listen, you never know what you have with somebody until you piss them off. Yeah. You never know. And once you piss someone off, you can really see where they are. You know, somebody who's amazing could be amazing until they get pissed off. It just and saves you so much. Oh my God. Yeah. But, the, but this, hopefully some of you right now in the future or today, like this will save you millions. Oh my God. Millions. You watch this and you're going into a partnership from someone who has experienced this. I don't care if it's your brother, your father, Does, doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You need an operating agreement, clearly outlining whose roles are what, whose gets what, what's expected from who. And what happens if you guys decide to split? It should not be weird. My wife was an attorney. She signed and did and put together a whole what do you call it? Uh, prenup mm -hmm. solely to protect and insulate the business. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is protected. Right. <laughs> Everything else is up. No, for but I love it. That's, but, that's the best advice. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I've never had anybody say that, but I, I, I mean, I hear people say it, but not on our podcast. So that's huge. So, um, okay. So make sure you protect yourself. And then that deal didn't work. So then what happened? <sighs> The business worked, but we just didn't get along, man. I mean, on what there's no point in so going. So you continued on with yeah. the business. So the business, the well, yeah. I let him. I said, hey, man, you know what? At this point, we had started Potomac PCR Roofing, Potomac Customer Modeling. That was completely in my name because look, we had two years together, right? Did great, fucking awesome, and we were just, you know, two type A's. I wanted to build scale cell. He didn't see that, you know. He wanted to kind of whatever, right? So I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, man. There's a lot more to it, but it's fucking irrelevant. The yeah. reality is, is, hey, okay, cool. Well, now we have these two businesses, and we had a plan to make them work. But the reality is I think we both knew that there was always a chance that, given how things were going, I might go here, he might go there, and never the two should you know, meet. Uh, I walked away from a quarter million bucks that I could really use at that time. 
Uh, even when we started that business, I walked away because that guy lied to me, and I could no longer trust that guy, yeah. that owner at the last Trying company. To find the right path now. Yeah, man, and I'm like, and it was always the theme is my back's against the wall, my back's against the wall. I didn't have savings when I left that last company, but to me, it was irrelevant because I couldn't trust you to pay me. Yeah. So what difference does it make if I have any savings? Like, you might not pay me. So what, you know, where's the security outside of betting on me? So I took my happy ass out there with my partner, and even though it didn't work out, I went and walked my ass door to door with one other salesman from the last company. We got our first sale, check in hand. I lost my, my insurance lap that lapsed that month, but that was the worst that happened. I got us going. Next thing you know, very soon we're making 20K a month, and again, that didn't work out. But it got me a lot of fucking confidence. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what, dude? I bet on my fucking self. There was no plan B. I had a girl at the time that was counting on me to pay bills and shit. That was a lot of fucking pressure, dude. And I made it happen. You know, again, insurance lapse, that was it. Now it's splitting these companies. That's like a divorce, by the way. That's yeah. a fucking divorce. If that's your best friend or not, it's a business partner. You grieve. It's messy, bro. And it sucked. It's heartbreaking. It sucked. It's heartbreaking. I still don't speak to that guy. Mm -hmm. It sucks. Had, yeah. We probably would have been way better with agreements, but anyhow, we are the fastest, so we go out and go on our own. We start PCR roofing, and we just just go. Just fucking go. Just unleash, get a couple kids, and we just fucking hammer it. We do around 2-1 two, two with about a quarter of a year, which isn't blowing anybody's hair back. By our second year, we did 6-7 by a year and nine months in. We're approached by Owens Corning, which is our distributor. That's when I get, that's our second year. I don't know what to do with the money. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to invest in myself because I see Ryan make a post saying, hey, you know, I was going to take night classes for business, to be honest with you. I'm like, I got to learn more. I, I, I've been a part of four of these remodeling businesses that have gone to five to seven. I know how to do that. I know I can do that. Scaling past that, I've seen a lot fail. Mm -hmm. And I've been a part of a couple that did. Not that I had any, but still, I've seen that. Yeah. Like that trajectory from to twenty, it gets a little more you dicey. You know what you know, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take some business classes because we're already at six, seven. Shit's popping off. Owens Corning, which is our, our, we're platinum with them now. They're approaching us. They're like, hey, you're the fastest to ever get here. Because so many people are also really full of shit about their real volume. They're like, I'm doing a bazillion dollars yeah, this I, year. I hear like, that every day. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So, but. We were doing it. The proof is that it's real, right? Like, we're platinum. You can't take that away from us. And technically, you're supposed to. That's not irrelevant. Yeah. It means what it means. And if you're in the industry, you know what it means. Yeah, so your, your shit's fast. Yeah, we're rocking, man. We're, we're from, But all I can see is what we're not doing. I'm comparing myself to guys like these 100 million. Like, damn, man. Because I've been doing it 16 years. And I'm not even appreciating the fact that in the two years that we've been rocking. You're killing it. Comparatively, the timeline shows, like, brother, just be patient, man. Like, in a couple of years, you'll be hunt. Like, look at our goals now, right? Yeah. So, even this year, we, you know, we've learned lessons. We've grown. We've, we've, I've continued to learn in leadership. Ryan Stuman posts about looking for another coaching client, decide to spend 150K, mm -hmm. find out it's taxable. Again, you didn't know what you didn't know. Now I find out I can invest in myself in like coaching. And then I learn what you do, which is, you want to spend money at night school and you want to learn. And like he said at the beginning of this, I'm always constantly, I spent a half a million dollars last year in personal and professional development. Yeah. So I'm fucking thirsty for it. I'm yeah. dying for it. Yeah. Once I figured out what that was and I'm like, holy shit, I'm getting into these networks. Stuman's one thing. He's amazing. He's fucking network guys that have exited. It's like a candy candy store. Like, holy shit, you did what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Brother, come here, please. Will you tell me? Absolutely, dude. Like, you just get access to all these people, and if you're in roofing, if you're in, oh my God, give me the playbook. Here's yeah. the playbook. Here's the EBITDA. Here's what we did. Here's how we do it. Anything else you want to know? Hop on the phone with me and my COO. Oh my Jesus, I take my money. Anybody else? There's this Andy Elliott guy. Now I'm like sitting here with you, like holy shit, this guy's. I can learn from him how to be a better leader, how to be a better husband, how to be a better all around. Just I watch how you operate. And I see how important that is in the day-to-day. -day. The business and everything is great, but if I'm not functioning at one optimally, and I say I want to be the best version of myself spiritually, mentally. It's funny you corrected yourself because that's the order that I do it, spiritually, mentally, physically, and professionally, yeah. right? And so, like, I see you operating. I'm like, dude, I want this. Whatever he's got, I fucking want it. Yeah, I'll fly out to Arizona. I owe it to my wife. Think about where I came from six years. I, I didn't believe in me. I got young men and women with families whole family is a whole office full of people that are all counting on me to do the right thing they don't see me like that they yeah. see me as an educated smart trustworthy t 
total leader, mm-hmm. dude, I'm taking that and I'm going to make them fucking dead right. We're going to celebrate like a motherfucker in a couple of years. I'm going to change some lives, dude. Yeah. You know? I love it. Well, dude, listen, you probably have one of the craziest stories, <laughs> right? And, 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 and I hear a lot of them, but like what I love is and what I, what I learned, let me tell you what I've learned. Number one, never quit. No, ever. Okay, because you probably wanted to quit. I noticed a million times you're like, I thought I was done. Yeah. Um, most of you, at some point, you're going to say, I thought I was done. Okay, so number one, you're never done, right? And number two, you're an overcomer. Like, you always believed that, you know, there was something else. And by the way, because you kept trying, you know, um, you just won, dude. And by the way, like, you haven't even really started now. I know. Like, think about this. We've talked, how old are you? 37, 38. Okay, 38. yeah, so he's 38 years old. Really up until about, you know, 35, it's been a kick in the balls, right? And then up until 18, you said you were grandma's boy, Yeah. right? So, 27, not 18. I wish it was 18. Yeah, so it's like, it's like, so like. I'm still for, grandma's boy, though. I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah. We love you, grandma. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, but it's like, it's like, this can happen to anybody and everybody's qualified. And maybe, you know, maybe you've been perfect and maybe you've ran into some tr- struggles. What are you doing? Are you beating the victim drum? You know, like, are you whining? Are you complaining? You know, and then at the end of the day, you look at all the times where you should have quit. You should have given up. You could have quit. You could have given up. But at the end of the day, you're so freaking stubborn, right, (laughs) that you kept going. I think you guys need to adopt his stubbornness. I think also you need to understand that he said that he found a coach, right, and that he found that when he got help as a coach, which he said, talked about, he asked for help lots of times, mm-hmm. the network inside of coaching companies, the network inside of the people that are like-minded, that are in those coaching companies, any coaching company in the world, there's people in there that are like-minded, just like you, that paid to get in there. And so many people get in there just for him, but you actually use those people as a resource oh to say, God. hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And by the way, um, also, we said, you know, we spent a half a million dollars this last year on self-development. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. When I look at your bank statement, you know, what's your education budget look like? What does your education, you know, spend for 2023 look like? What is your entertainment budget for 2023 look like? How big of a life do you want? One thing that I like about you is that you have very big dreams. And because you have very big dreams, you constantly keep raising the bar. You know, I think a lot of people have small dreams. And I think that you said, you know, at one point, 10 million would be amazing. Yeah. But now I'm like, screw 10 million. Like, I want 100 million. Yeah. And, and really, you being in proximity of people, you know, that are thinking bigger has allowed you to think bigger. You said if you would have got dropped off in the wrong part of town, you would have hung out with homeless people and you wouldn't be here right now. But you got dropped off in a different part of town. So the idea of this entire... Um, like the last 45 minutes has been about truly one thing, proximity. Yeah. You wow. being in proximity of the right people, those good people that let you live in their barn, that spent time with you, those people gave you a different perspective. Hell, you're like, dude, I wish I could live there. How many people want to live in the loft of a, of a barn? But that was to him, heaven. It was amazing. And by the way, it probably was kick-ass and cool. Yeah. But the idea of it is, I want you to understand this, being around good people you know, that's like, that's the key. Being around people that are positive, that's the key. Being around people that are smarter than you, like, that's the key. A lot of people don't be, like being around people that are smarter than them because they, they don't, they want to they be around people who aren't as smart as them so they can build themselves up and feel more powerful. Do listen, the higher the proximity of being around people that are better than you, the more you're going to rise. And by the way, the more that you learn from other people, the more that you can teach other people. And now, Absolutely. and now you're a teacher. So he teaches now, he coaches now, he's also still a student, um, he's thinking about his family, he's doing all the, guys, imagine this, all the things that he once ruined, now he's doing all those things at a really high level. Like, isn't that beautiful, isn't that cool? So like, that's the idea. So where are you at? If you made it to this part in the video right now, where are you at? What are your excuses? What kind of life do you want? Okay, who are you getting around to push you? Like who, who is it that's going to, who are the three people or the five people that are going to get you to where you want to go? And then lastly, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be close to Kenny for a long time. You know, where is Kenny going to be in two years from now? Okay. Like what's his trajectory by what he's doing now going to be in two years from now? Okay. What's your trajectory? What do you want to do? Notice he's being around people that are literally, like he said, delusional, that are delusional about their futures because he's a delusional type guy. 
He believes that he can get out of any situation. He believes that he can get anything that he wants. But at the end of the day, he's taken that that he had when he was young, and now he's like ultra humble about it. Now he's like ultra grateful about it. Now you're like a different human being in your internal operating system. Dude, you're a savage and you're a killer, but you're also super loving and you're super grateful. And I believe that that's just a mix that you don't see a lot in the world anymore because you either see too extreme on that end with no heart or you see somebody that has a lot of heart, but then they literally don't want to attack anything viciously. And you know what you want. You just told us that in two years you want to create an, a massive exit at the end of 2026. And I think we're all going to see that happen. And it'd be cool and watch oh, us. In, see it. Yes, oh, I know. Sir. But in two years when we watch it and people are like, damn, yeah, you know, Kenny. Be, oh, we'll, 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 we'll be videotaping that for sure. Yeah. Well, everything that I said was going to happen, sometimes my team will go back and they're like, Andy, you said you were going to do this in 2021. I was just watching that video, man. Yeah. And then they show it and I'm like, damn, I told you fools I wasn't yeah. playing. And you know, it's really, you know, because the future is ahead. But I think right now the key is you're living in your, in your current presence. You're taking care of your wife. You're trying to be a better husband to her, which is so cool. And to your kids. That's what I want to learn a lot more from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I do worry, but that's why I'm here. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, I want to learn from you, man, and well, your wife and, and all that. I know I could be better, but. Yeah, and, and isn't it cool? Listen, a lot of you right now, you're listening to him, and you're like, damn, dude, you got all you want. And he's still not satisfied. Okay, what does that mean? It has nothing to do with financial. He's like, dude, I want to be a better man. Dude, I want to be better to my family. Like this right here, this is the secret to killing it. In this world, where this market will reward men like you that are taking care of their families, that are doing a good job taking care of themselves, that are continually self-educating themselves. Because if they're a leader and they call themselves the leader, they want to be a great example to everybody. You don't want to let anybody down. You might have been a stumbling block for a lot of people for a long time, just like I was, but now you want to be the light for a lot Absolutely. of people. You know, and it's super cool. So I just want to say, Kenny, we love you, bro. Love you too, I appreciate man. you. If somebody wants to join, okay, uh, be a part of your team. Because I, I love this part where people are like, dude, I want to roll with Kenny. Right, um, Kenny. How do they reach out to you? They hit you up on social media. They text you. you want like, to what apply they to the uh, if you're in the DMV because we're in Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, and technically Pennsylvania as well. So if you're in the DMV, uh, go to info at pcrpaulcharlieroogerroofing.com. Info at pcrroofing.com. You can also check out the coaching group, which is Blue Collar Ballers, and that website is Blue Collar Ballers Group. Dot com um, and we have the Facebook group Blue Collar Ballers that Sean's in Danny's in uh, we got to get you in there big dog yeah I mean, it's how free. Do they, how, not that you couldn't pay no I'm no, no. I, I'll pay for that shit hey how do they find you on social media too Kenny Baden on Facebook and Blue Collar Closer on Insta Blue Collar Closer you guys got it Kenny's the man dude he's killing it guys he's doing big stuff question is we're going into 2024 2025 2026 what are you going to do in these next 90 days you know these next you know 120 days what are you going to do in this next six months we're going to do in this next year okay like you got to recreate today everything that you want is literally a decision away and just like this guy got his face kicked in and now he's doing the, the face kicking in right it's because he didn't quit so no one can take you out if you don't quit. Nothing wants to stand in the something that doesn't stop attacking. And your, your stubborn ass just kept attacking. That's and right. eventually, guess what? Winning recognized him. He became, really he became the person he needed to be. Okay, so the sooner that you become the person you need to be, I think the sooner the success is going to come. Okay, because now he's proud of himself. And look at the accomplishments coming out of it. So love you, bro. Appreciate you, it, man. man. Thank you guys. Make sure you hit Kenny up. We'll see you guys in the next podcast. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. I'm going to be a hot roller. Move forward in the battle like soldier.